Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it will it will it better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Um, let me start out with just a couple of uh, definitions to uh, uh, kind of bring everybody up to speed on, on the topic I'll be talking about. You're probably familiar with the term continuing care retirement communities. Uh, continuing care retirement communities are communities that have uh, more than one level of living. So the traditional or the model you see today in a continuing care retirement community would be independent living along with personal care, skill care, and now memory care is also becoming very popular. But the terminology has changed. We're no longer called continuing care retirement communities anymore. We're called life plan communities. Now the reason for that is the retirement word has become sort of a bad word in our industry. Uh, so many of our residents now are still employed, still working. Um, Plus, what we're trying to do is really um, uh, show our communities to be active, vibrant communities. So now within our industry, we've changed our terminology. We're now known as life plan communities. Very much lifestyle communities. So if you look at the, um, the senior living community ads you see in magazines and so forth, you know, think about what they depict. They all are depicting lifestyle within their communities. You don't see any ads with uh, a nurse standing next to a hospital bed, somebody with an IV in their arm. You don't see those kinds of ads, although that's part of the program. Really, a lot of what we're selling today uh, is lifestyle. So within the world of life plan communities, there's two primary contract types. There are life care contracts, and then there are fee-for-service contracts. The life care contracts uh, provide as part of the funding, uh, the payment to the community, include unlimited um, higher levels of care. So if you need personal care, if you need skill care, whatever it may be, there's no additional charge for that. Contrasted to communities that are fee-for-service communities, where if you are in need of a higher level of care, you need to pay a market rate or some per diem rate uh, for those services. Now within Lancaster County, Willow Valley is the only type A life care community in the county. The rest of the communities are fee for service. A few exceptions, um, but uh, generally speaking, they are all fee for service communities. Now I want to share some statistics with you and this was reported by Lancaster Area Senior Services. This is a group of 17 uh, senior living communities in Lancaster that that have a, uh, a loose alliance. Um, but that group, those 17 communities of which Willow Valley is one, uh, we serve uh, over 16,000 residents in our communities in Lancaster County. We employ over 8,000 team members in our communities with a total payroll in excess of $250, $250 million. Ten communities are the highest paying real estate taxes in their municipality. Okay. At Willow Valley, we have uh, approximately 2,400 residents. 27% of those residents come from within Lancaster County. 50% of them come from outside of Pennsylvania. We have 37 states represented currently. So when you think about the economic impact, the migration into the county of generally high net worth individuals with disposable income coming into the county, supporting you all, the local businesses in Lancaster, all that is happening in terms of employment, uh, not to mention uh, everybody's involved in some type of construction, some kind of an expansion in their, in their community. There really is tremendous economic uh, impact 
by the senior living communities in the county. Since the recession, really the growth amongst the not-for-profit communities, and really Lancaster is dominated by the not-for-profits uh, in this sector, the post-recession growth has been in a number of areas. First of all, campus expansion. So many of the communities continue to expand. What they're doing is adding independent living units. When you have a high percentage of your uh, units being higher levels of care to independent living, um, that model is not really sustainable going forward. So a lot of the communities are needing to add independent living units uh, to con continue to be successful. There's a lot of repositioning of older product that's also occurring. Um, communities uh, such as Willow Valley, um, who, who have been around for over 30 years, um, uh, there's a lot of repositioning that needs to occur on our campuses. So what's happening is the communities are doing a lot of renovation work. At Willow Valley, we do somewhere around $15 million worth of renovation every year uh, as we're constantly uh, renovating apartments as well as common areas. Many of the communities are now adding amenities. So you see a lot of uh, uh, new amenity additions uh, being added as communities uh, really want to build on their lifestyle. And memory care. Memory care is one of the hottest areas now in terms of uh, new development. Home and community-based services is another area uh, of growth uh, in the senior living sector. Uh, as you, I'm sure, are aware, uh, all the surveys uh, that are taken, AARP surveys, the vast, vast majority of people uh, say they want to stay in their homes. So why not meet people where they want to be? So a lot of the senior communities are now involved in home and community-based services. At Willow Valley, a number of years ago, we started the Smart Life at Willow Valley program, which is the only life care at home program in Lancaster County um, that's all-inclusive, similar to our on-campus life care program. It's also the fastest growing life care at home program in the country. So probably what we'll see in the future is uh, some other uh, organizations coming into the market with some type of at home program uh, as well. We're seeing a fair amount of uh, development of satellite campuses. Uh, a couple examples of that in Lancaster uh, would be uh, uh, Landis's project downtown, Steepleview Lofts, where they've created a, a smaller satellite campus. Uh, there's a project um, that's going to be uh, underway up in Lidditz uh, with Pleasant View Community. So you'll be seeing more and more of these satellite campuses uh, popping up. The biggest area of growth, and this is primarily amongst the, um, the multi-facility providers, the large systems is affiliation, growing through uh, merger, acquisition of other communities. And I'll talk more about this later, uh, but this is a huge area uh, of growth amongst the not-for-profit industry. New community locations uh, amongst the not-for-profit um, is pretty much dropped off the map. Um, new community um, uh, construction is pretty much in the for-profit area. Uh, and these are primarily uh, a model that independent living with maybe one additional level of care, uh, personal care or memory care. These are general, generally rental uh, type product. Uh, but in terms of new community locations in the not-for-profit sector, that really has dropped off quite dramatically post-recession. Now I'm going to mention a couple of trends uh, in, uh, in the area of design and, uh, and um, I'm a little reluctant to do this since we have these expert architects in the room here so you all can pipe up if I say something uh, out of line here but certainly contemporary architecture is, is the way to go 
right now. So the traditional architecture interior design uh, is being replaced by either transitional, more contemporary uh, type uh, of architecture, larger windows, uh, paying close attention to light filled rooms, open floor plans, and that type of thing. So what that requires communities to do is to convert their older product uh, to try to keep up with, with today's, today's market. A lot of attention being paid to uh, outdoor spaces, outdoor living spaces, um, comfortable seating uh, areas for gatherings, fire pits, outdoor kitchens. Um, uh, at, at our Vistas uh, community, we have a rooftop bar lounge. So you're seeing more and more of um, uh, communities uh, bringing uh, things to outside uh, area. Without question, the biggest theme running through uh, everything from a design pr perspective today is the wellness theme. So that runs through uh, everything we, we're doing, both in terms of design and programming, and, and very much building uh, for occupant health and wellness. Something I like to talk about, and, and I think is, is uh, something that needs to be done more of, is going vertical on our buildings. Um, uh, creates more open space opportunities, obviously. Um, you know, we do run into uh, local zoning ordinances, uh, restricting on, on how high you can go with your buildings. But certainly, as you look, um, not only in the suburban market, but also in the city market, going vertical is extremely important. Perfecting small spaces. This is another uh, area, uh, hot area in terms of design. One of the things we like to do uh, with our prospects is talk about the fact that, uh, yes, you have your home, in your, your apartment or your villa, whatever it may be, but really your home is the entire community and all the open spaces and all the amenities uh, in the building. But it is really important for us to um, look at those smaller apartment styles uh, that maybe can't be combined or converted into something larger uh, to really perfect what we're doing in those smaller spaces. And I think there is a market for that and we've had some success in that area. One of the things that uh, is, is coming back and maybe a, a, a trend that will pick up some, some steam is the themed environments. Now, I want to use as an example, um, a uh, age-restricted active adult community in Florida, Latitude Margaritaville. So there's two, two of them going up, Tampa and uh, Daytona Beach. Um, uh, uh, I've talked to some of the individuals down there. Now these, these are not continuing care retirement communities or, or life plan communities, but they are active adult age-restricted. And um, they have over 100,000 names in their lead base. This is huge. Um, and it's bringing people together who have a common interest uh, in Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but this concept of a, of a themed environment um, is certainly a trend. And even if you think about the villages community in Florida, which is far and away the largest uh, I should say age qualified, not age restricted, age qualified community. Uh, that in a, in a sense was a themed community also. Disney World for adults, basically, was their initial vision there. So I think you'll be seeing more of these, these themed environments. In the area of technology, a number of things that we're watching closely um, is uh, number one, telehealth. And a lot of this is going to be driven by staffing shortages. Uh, although all of these technologies uh, are really, really have a goal of maintaining uh, individuals in their current, current settings. Uh, but we're watching closely what's happening with telehealth and some of the different caregiver models that are util utilizing this technology. 
Voice recognition and voice command technology is another thing that we're watching uh, very closely. Um, these voice technologies may very well work with things like Alexa and some of the things that are being used possibly in, in your home. And the uh, question uh, about this will be, uh, are these going to uh, supplement the tablets or are they gonna supplant the tablets? So it remains to be seen uh, where things go with, with uh, voice recognition and voice command technology. Integrated systems, uh, connecting smart home automation with people's wearables, with their social engagement platforms, putting all of these elements uh, on a mobile device, integrating them all uh, for residents of, of uh, our communities. And the last one uh, I'm going to mention is the driverless cars. Now, um, the villages, again, um, uh, are using driverless vehicles now. So if you go down to the villages in Florida and you use your smartphone to, uh, to uh, access a, a, a taxi, okay, you're going to have a uh, self-driving vehicle pick you up. That's what they have now. Now, they actually have an attendant right now who's sitting in the vehicle which I guess makes you feel a lot better. Somebody's sitting up front. There's no steering wheel, but they're sitting up front. Well, that, that attendant, I call them, they will be out of those cars probably before too long. So if you think about the ramifications of these self-driving vehicles from a real estate perspective, it's, it's just mind boggling. You think of all the surface parking lots we have, we're still building parking garages, more and more parking garages. Everything we're doing now is uh, podium building over top of parking underneath the building. So really, we're, we're beginning to think about, okay, what are we gonna do uh, 10 years down the road uh, with some of these parking facilities that we're, we're building today? One of the things I'll mention about the technology companies, and I think this is one of the things that is holding them back, uh, is um, they really need to build technologies that are engaging uh, with people and frankly are, are fun. Right now, a lot of it is um, alarms going off. Uh, well, that's not exactly uh, fun, engaging type technology. So. I think that the technology companies to really uh, um, uh, uh, make more headway uh, in this area uh, is to be more consumer centric than what they've been in the past. Some of the changes I see coming in, in the Lancaster market, uh, I, I mentioned the, uh, earlier the expansion into uh, satellite campuses. One of the things I think you're going to be seeing is more of these satellite campuses in an urban environment. So you can watch for more and more uh, communities taking a very hard look at uh, coming into an urban environment. Now Lancaster is dominated uh, by single site communities. We don't have a large senior living uh, organization in Lancaster. We're, we're a group of these uh, single site communities, all generally healthy, good occupancy. Uh, most of them branching out, expanding their, their platform. But what is coming is consolidation. Now, just like you've seen consolidation with the hospitals, uh, that's happening nationally in our industry. In fact, Philadelphia is, is one of the hotbeds of consolidation. Has not happened here in Lancaster yet. Um, there, there are a number of communities that um, uh, I would predict will seek some type of affiliation, consolidate uh, in, in the future. So this is gonna happen uh, in our market um, uh, in the years down the road. 
It's happening everywhere else in the country, so it will come to Lancaster at some point. Now, a, p a potential game changer in Lancaster is, of course, UPMC. So the impact of UPMC uh, is going to potentially be significant for our industry. LG and Penn, they don't have a, a senior living component uh, to what they do. But UPMC does. They own eight senior living communities in the Pittsburgh market. They also do home health care. And home health care in, in uh, markets, uh, uh, I'll say other than Lancaster, this is an area of business that is being um, taken up by the hospitals. They are controlling the home health business. This is what UPMC does out in Pittsburgh. When they come to Lancaster, uh, there's a, a, a real possibility of some significant changes. And actually, I would foresee, they, they don't build se senior communities themselves. They acquire senior communities. This is what they've done in Pittsburgh. So when they're more firmly entrenched here in Lancaster, they're going to be a potential affiliation partner, I think, for a number of communities in Lancaster. Now, everything's good in our industry. You know, we, as I mentioned, we have strong occupancy. Uh, everybody's growing to some degree, adding independent living units, filling those units. But we have a huge constraint that is um, uh, looming over our heads, and, and that is uh, workforce. Okay. We cannot find the people we need to work in our communities. And this isn't just, uh, you know, we've been through nursing shortages and, and that type of thing, and that's a, something that cycles. Um, uh, workforce shortage we're seeing across the board uh, in uh, all areas of our community. Uh, back of the house in the kitchens, finding cooks, finding people working in, 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 the, uh, in the kitchens, very difficult. It's, it's basically across the board. So when people ask me, well, you know, what kind of keeps you up at night or what do you worry about? It's this workforce, workplace, workforce shortage. Um, and uh, it's, you know, when, when I read about uh, the number of people Wegmans is going to employ and what's Whole Foods going to employ and Target, uh, all these uh, are, are simply adding to the pressure uh, on this workforce shortage. Now, it is going to drive design. It's going to drive these technologies as we uh, uh, deal with um, the, the reality of the situation in terms of, of uh, ability to hire individuals. Now let me talk uh, a little more specifically about uh, Willow Valley communities. And um, we, we are obviously, from our roots in hospitality, we're a high hospitality model community. And, I, and I'd say we're on the third generation of hospitality. We went from customer service to customer experience. Now it's customer engagement. Uh, so what's next will, will remain to be seen. Um, but some of the things that we do as an organization, and we try to maintain uh, somewhat of a leadership position in our industry. So when we look at trends and best practices, um, we, we are generally looking outside of our industry. So we're looking at what's happening in hospitality, what's happening in colleges, what's happening in, in the restaurant field uh, to really understand uh, societal trends that are happening, um, uh, you know, how people are living today, um, uh, that type of thing. So we're, we're looking beyond our industry. We've, we, of course, monitor and keep track of what's happening with our industry and, and certainly find best practices within our industry. But a lot of our ideas and our thoughts are, are things that we're seeing outside of our industry. So for an organization wanting to maintain, you know, continue to be relevant 
uh, in the marketplace, uh, that's something I think you really uh, need to do. Uh, an interesting uh, thing about, uh, about Willow Valley is um, um, we don't do any market studies. We, we do no, no market studies. And I, I tell people within the industry that, and they're like, what, what are you, out of your mind? What, what we are is basically keen observers of the world. That's basically what we do. We, uh, as we're out, um, uh, we, we observe what's happening in the world. We observe how people are engaging socially, um, you know, around what type of venue or, or what type of experience uh, are people uh, enjoying. Um, and that's a lot of um, where we get our ideas from. There's, there's a, a great line, and I've quoted this numerous times from the Steve Jobs movie, where he's talking to his daughter about, about his idea of the iPod. And he says to her, well, people don't know what they want till you give it to them. And I think there's some truth to that in terms of uh, some of the market study work that's done. Sometimes people can't really project out as what the world of possibilities might be in a senior living community. Uh, uh, so a lot of the work we do um, is just observation of what's happening in the world. We are, ha however, heavy users of data analytics. So we're heavy into data analytics, and I'm not talking about Google, Google analytics. I'm talking about deep dive analytics in understanding when people go on our website, what are they looking at? What are the things that intrigue them the most? Where are they spending most of their time? So as a group, we're looking at uh, clicks on our various digital platforms to try to understand uh, what people are looking for, where their interests lie. Then we can help them to better navigate their way through the various options that Willow Valley may offer or even other communities may offer. So we are very, in, very into um, uh, data analytics. So in a sense, uh, some of our market study work is coming through uh, our data analytics. We like to be ageless in our thinking. So it's important to free our minds of these stereotypical characteristics we associate with age. Um, uh, we, we have a fellow in our community, uh, in fact, David lives in, in your building at, at Spring Run, uh, who's done 40-some Ironman triathlons. Well. Um, uh, you know, r really, age is not not what determines what what an individual can or can't do. So, if our team, and and generally we're going to be younger than than the residents moving into the community. Although I'm I'm age qualified now. I've graduated, which is great. Um, uh, you know. If we bring these, these stereotypes uh, of what, what a, a, a senior in the community can or can't do to the process, all that's going to do is limit us in terms of our, our way of thinking, and uh, eventually um, it, it will lead to a decline in the, in the community. So it's important to, you know, for, for us uh, and our team, to um, uh, think agelessly and take that out of the equation. Many years ago, when we, when we first uh, announced and, and moved forward with the Willow Gables community, that was the first two-story two living in an um, age-qualified community. Did not exist in the country. And at the time, um, we felt there was a diminished standard that had to be accepted by individuals moving into a community like this. So we wanted to break from that diminished standard. So we sat down and we identified 
what are the conventional wisdoms uh, in our industry that you never break? Okay, number one was two-story living uh, in a senior community. That's exactly what we did, and it's still today probably one of our most popular products that we have. It's two and three-story living. We make accommodation for elevator. We've probably put in a half dozen of them. That's it. Um, we have 92 two and three-story villas on our campuses. So that was number one. Number two, seniors don't want to cook anymore. Okay, we're going to have gourmet kitchens. Now this is the mid-90s when, when we're planning this. Um, so the idea was to um, pretty much break with as many conventional wisdoms as we can th could think about or identify um, uh, that we felt just were not relevant any longer. Um, at that time, were seniors going to go on the internet? Most communities would have said no. In fact, if they would have polled their residents, they would have resoundingly said we're not interested in the internet. So we put an information appliance in Willow Gables, and I had a number of people say to me, you know, take it out and give us a $3,000 credit or something like that, and I said, well, I'm not going to take out your refrigerator, so I'm not going to take out your information appliance either. We were running their traffic through our high-speed internet system so we can monitor the traffic. And before too long, everybody, of course, is, is utilizing their, their computer and, and gaining internet access. So breaking free of conventional wisdoms is one of the benchmarks of Willow Valley. Uh, uh, we like to push the envelope. We like to constantly reinvent uh, ourselves, uh, always looking to move the ball forward. That's what we like to do. And um, one of the things, and I'll just conclude with this one comment, we can get to some questions, is something our, our industry needs to understand in order to be sustainable is that we need to change the way we do things um, without question. And the other thing is we need to increase our pace of change. As an industry, we're, we're pretty slow to adopt uh, uh, new things and new technologies. So I think those two things, uh, really looking at uh, what we do, changing the way we do business, uh, and uh, recognizing that we need to increase our pace of change are two things that not only Willow Valley but other senior living communities need to uh, need to do to be sustainable into the future. So with that, I, I think I'm okay to open it up for, for questions.